my first guest. I'm so excited. <laughs> he earned an Emmy nomination for playing Luke Banco, the husband of Elizabeth Moss's character, June, in Hulu's award-winning drama, which I'm obsessed with, The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> Full disclosure, I almost wore red today when I went in my stylist said, don't do that today, Tamara. He's also starred in Marvel Studios' spy thriller, Black Widow as Mason, and now, woo, he is taking on his most challenging role yet, as former President Barack Obama in Showtime's anthology series, The First Lady. Take a look. So, yeah, there's a little difference between you and those other candidates, Barack. Just, um, I could be President of the United States. Can you, can you find it in yourself to be a little excited for me? Excuse me if I can't share in the excitement of my husband potentially being shot. It, it is interesting to me that you're more willing to believe in me being Maybe me being shot than me being president. Tam fam, please welcome O.T. Fagmenlay to the show! I know you're taping in Toronto. You came in for the show. You look marvelous. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Your story, first of all, the audience, you can hear, they're so excited. They're not here for me. They're here for you. Right. Um, your journey is so compelling. And we um, were looking at just the arc of your journey. And it always starts, I feel, with the name. Mm. O.T. stands for, and you've been asking this, but you describe it so beautifully. I read a quote from you about it. Give us the whole name and why it was abbreviated. So, uh, yeah, when I was born, my, the name was given to me is Ola Tunde, Ola Teju, Ola Olorun, Fag um, Which is, yeah, it's a, it's a mouthful. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, it's, a, it's a Yoruba name. And in uh, Yoruba tradition, very often, like, you're named according to the circumstances of your birth. So um, my first name, Ola Tunde, Ola means honor or wealth. Tunde means to return. And so my mom actually lost a child before I was born. Mm. And so when I was born, Ola Tunde, this is the returning of wealth, the returning of honor to our family. Oh, I, I read a quote with you describing it, and I said, OK, I'm going to put it on the card, but there's no way I can describe it as beautifully <laughs> as you would. Um, it's been an incredible ride. You've got a lot of attention on you with the film that's coming up. Uh, but Handmaid's Tale, could you have ever anticipated the obsession that would follow that show? No. Uh, yeah, you, you know, and it's also, <clears throat> it's, it's funny because when it, Handmaid's first came out, you know, Hulu wasn't a really known Not at entity. All. So, you know, when I knew I was going to be on this show, Handmaid's Tale, was anybody even going to watch it? And for it to be such a breakout, and I think at the time it came, and then under the presidency that, you know, it came out under, it really sparked something in a lot of people. Well, you think about how long the book was they are lingering before it be became this series. Talk about right place, right time. To your point, I always wonder when I watch the show, would it have been received as ferociously as it was if the timing didn't coincide with what was happening in the world? Yeah, I think you're making a brilliant point about that. I mean, unfortunately, I think a lot of the issues about a patriarchal society, a society of those who have and those who have not, is kind of like a long-term issue in society. Yeah. But when Handmaids came out, I think a lot of those things, the Me Too movement and a lot of the issues that are dealt with inside the Handmaid's Tale were really at the yeah. forefront. And so I think it just kind of caught Now, fire. I know this new season, the plot and all that is under wraps, but I did see a photo of right. your characters kissing. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. Um, that. That's actually on set, so. <laughs> What can you tell us about the twists and turns of the relationship and where this is going? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I can't say much, honestly, because they know kind you of, you know, they got me under that. I know. <laughs> but, but, you know, I think what's really interesting is that the character, June, yeah. who's my wife in it, she's been through a really traumatic event. You know, I keep getting many... mad at June. I'm like, OK, June, we got out. Why do we have to keep going back in? Why do you keep Why going back in? Why do you keep going back this in? This is an issue w within the relationship, yeah. you know, where Luke's trying to figure out, like, uh, do you really want to be here? Do you want to be back there? Do you want to be with this other guy? How do you really feel about me? How has our relationship changed? And I think a lot of relationships go through that thing where people change. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, you know, there's this whole thing of, like, you may marry five times the same woman. You may marry five times the same man because that person changes over wow. time. And how are you able to react and change to well, that you person? You should say that because I know one person in your life who's never changed. And when we come back, 
I'm going to reveal that person more with O.T. <laughs> in this play after the break and his groundbreaking role as Barack Obama after the break. I don't want to look back and think, what did I become living in that house? It is my great honor to introduce to you the First Lady of the United States. Oh, still got it. Never lost it. That was a clip from Showtime's upcoming series, The First Lady, which revisits the stories of three former First Ladies and the way they established change for the nation. And we've been talking with O.T. Finley, who plays the 44th president of this country, Barack Obama, with, of course, our friend Viola Davis as Michelle Obama. I remember reading the headline of the casting, and I thought, this whole show, right place, right time. This is the right place, right time for you. Mm. In this role, how did it feel when you got the call? Uh, I mean, of course, like thrilling, but also daunting. Yeah. You know, I don't think there's really been maybe a more loved American president than Barack Obama around the world. You know, and <laughs> true. And um, he, he kind of came to the fore at the beginning of social media. He was the first social media president, the first 2008, one. Two thousand eight. Yeah, of course. Twitter. Twitter had just started. Yeah. Exactly. And so. It's a really big challenge to play someone who's so well known and not feel like you're doing an imitation of him. Well, that's him. what I was curious about because you you have natural coincidences in your life with him. Both of your father's African, mm -hmm. both of your mother's white. Mm -hmm. um, a similarity of appearance, by the way, and also the same social struggles of identity, which mm. you've been open to talk about, and he has as well. So you have these coincidences, but you have great differences, obviously. Right. So you don't want to imitate, you want to find your craft in finding him. Yeah. So does that mean you're practicing in the mirror all the time? I don't want to make it trite, because <laughs> you're a brilliant award-winning actress, but how do you, actor, how do you do that? Yeah, you know, there's a whole technical aspect to it, you know, like studying dialect and movement, and I had some great support, some great coaches, some great friends who helped me out with that. But I think, like, on a deeper level, it's almost like a, a painter isn't trying to do a photograph of a scene. They're trying to do their impression, their expression of it. And so I was trying to find his heart. Like, what's at the core of him? And he's such a remarkable individual. He has such love for his family, such intellect, nice. such charisma. And so I, it, was, it was really trying to get to the heart of, of the man. That was the challenge. Did you find the heart of the man? I don't know. I found my interpretation of his heart. <laughs> I, you know. I love that. You know, um... We, I mentioned your mother during the pandemic, as I understand, she moved to Tanzania. And you felt, your mother's so beautiful, that's a sweet picture. You felt compelled to also go with her at some point and meet yeah. her there. Right place, right time moment. Yeah, it really was. I mean, because, you know, remember at the beginning of the pandemic, it was almost, is the world ending? Like, is this the end of everything? And I thought, well, if the world's ending, I might as well go to Africa with my mom. And, um, <laughs> And good so, choice. Yeah, good choice. Always to be with mom. And uh, she lives in this, um, I guess, small town, large village on the edge of the Indian Ocean in Tanzania. It's beautiful. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a remarkable change in my life. Lots of hardships came through COVID. I lost people in my life through COVID. But also there was kind of like a rebirth, I felt, there, where mm. I, I kind of discovered a lot about myself, a lot about what I, my relationship I wanted to have, the broader community. So in the midst of all of that, you found it to be the right place that you needed to be at the right time. And it's interesting you say that because your mom agrees. Let's take a look at what she said. Hi, O.T. It's mom. Right time, right place. O.T. me, Tanzania, global pandemic. He came to make sure that he kept me alive and I'm alive. Uh, we had a great fun though, we really did. We did homeschooling with the kids, we supplied a district hospital with sanitizer, and we made a basketball court. It was a great time, and lots of games, lots of debates. Darling, love you, and thank you so much for being my son, you blow me away. Yeah. You're trying to get me emotional. <laughs> That's so sweet. I feel like crying. Yeah, yeah. That's my mom. She's she's my hero. She's one of the she's the most generous person I know. Oh, no, you're gonna get me into it. Well, her. because I yeah. have a son. Yeah. And you know, I just saw this quote with Denzel Washington. He talked about a mother's love, her son is her last love, and the mom's his first love. Wow. Yeah. And that bond. Um, so it made me emotional to hear her talk of you that way and you of her. Yeah, she she really 
has got such a great sense of like giving to community. She's kind of dedicated her life to that, to giving to people around her. She's her nickname is Mota, Mother of Them All, because she's <gasps> she's really been a mother to, to so many people and and just yeah, she's just my hero. Yeah. Oh well, you're a hero to us and so many for what you've done for. The children there, building that basketball court, helping with sanitizers, all of that right place, right time. And you seize the moment. Congratulations on all the success. Thank you. And everything that's come your way. Thanks. Please check out OT's new movie, The First Lady, which premieres on Showtime on April 17th. Don't miss it. Thank you so much for being here.